All right, this video is going to be primarily over gravitation, but we're going to cover a little bit of basics on what field forces are. And uh, up to this point, we have been, been dealing primarily with contact forces where their objects are in contact with each other to cause the force. But now we're going to talk about field forces where it's a force that acts over a distance. It's uh, where the objects do not have to be in contact with each other. And we use the analogy of the field to describe the idea that things act over a distance. Um, when we were in projectiles and the objects were going up into the air and coming back down, there was a field force acting on it uh, known as gravity, and we always used it as the acceleration due to gravity. And so we're going to cover that more in detail today. And then we're also going to talk about, before we get into gravity, uh, the five field forces that we know about. So we're going to do the fundamental forces or the fundamental field forces and make sure we cover all of them and, and, and you know, at least and scratching the surface of those and then we'll get into uh, gravitation. So we're going to set up a, a table for ourselves where we have the name of the force. And then the fundamental quantity. basically what causes the force, uh, the field, and then when the field is always going to equal the force over the fundamental quantity. That's kind of our equation to justify all this. So the first force we're going to talk about will be the force of gravity. And it has a fundamental quantity of mass. And then the field will be force divided by mass. And uh, the name of the field uh, we, we have been calling for a while is acceleration. Uh, and it's usually for us the, the common name for the force of gravity. The field is the acceleration due to gravity. So we have the force of gravity, and then in that field is actually the acceleration. So that's why we kept using that gravity had a, an acceleration up to this point. Uh, now we're going to get into how it is a force. Our next force will be the electric force, and the electric force is charged or is caused by charges. Uh, positive and negative, so the, the force between them would be attractive. They could be attracted to each other or repulsed by each other. Uh, so there's a, an electric force between charges, uh, either repulsion or attraction. And our electric field is uh, force divided by charge, Q. You may now release for the blackout pet uh, Q represents charge. So electric force will be charge. Uh, I'm sorry, electric force will be force divided by charge, and that is the electric field. We don't have a fancy name like acceleration due to gravity. It's just the electric field. When we talk about the field, it's the electric field. The third one is the magnetic force. Um, and in this class, we're not going to study at length, actually pretty much at, not at all, what causes the fundamental quantity or what causes the magnetic force or how that field occurs we're just really going to study magnetic force in general um, the two we're really going to cover are force of gravity and electric force those are the two we're really going to get after um, now we're going to go into what the, a strong nuclear force and a strong nuclear force it's best if we just define what it is uh, the strong nuclear force is the force that holds protons and neutrons together. Uh, they keep everything together in the nucleus of an atom. So an atom is made up of protons and neutrons, and protons are all positive and they want to repel the, each other. And so what the strong nuclear force does, it overcomes the electric force, which is a strong force, and it's stronger than the electric force in, in the nucleus, and therefore it overcomes that repulsive force between protons and, and neutrons. And so it's, we just call it a strong nuclear force because it's in the nucleus and it is strong. Speed this up a little bit. And then we go into the weak nuclear force. 
And the weak nuclear force is what holds a proton to be a proton. There's little small particles that make up a proton. And the weak nuclear force is what keeps those particles together to make up a proton. So they keep the particles that compose a proton or a neutron together to make them one object. And uh, there's a little bit of repulsive force there, but it does, it's not real strong to keep them all together to make them one particular object. Now, the, the one we can deal with the most and, and create things with is the magnetic force. Uh, we don't go into that a whole lot this year, but there's, there are things that you can do with magnetic forces that uh, are kind of cool. Uh, but we're really going to study the force of gravity and the electric force uh, for the most part this year. All right, so continuing with gravitational force, Gravity is the force of attraction between objects. Every object that has mass and another object that would have mass would have a gravitational force between them. So it's an attraction between all masses. All masses, all masses, wow, all masses attracted to another mass. Gravity is considered to be a very weak force. The reason for that is basically if you think about Earth is a very, very, very massive object compared to other objects, in order for it to accelerate things at 9.8 meters per second squared, the Earth has to be extremely large. There's a lot of mass there to get one force. So the equation for gravity is F sub G equals G M1 M2 over R squared, where capital G is the gravitational constant. And M1 plus M2 is the two masses that are having a gravitational pull between each other. And then R is the distance between the two objects from their center of masses. So if you're thinking about the Earth to the moon or the sun to the Earth, it's always from the center of the sun and the center of the Earth where you have masses. And there's a distance between those two center of masses. So it's the distance from the center of mass 1 from the distance of center of mass 2. Now, there are some good numbers that you need to know. The first one is the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton multiplied by a meter squared divided by a kilogram squared. The other is the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the negative 24th in kilograms. And the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th in meters. So having those things as good numbers to know and the equation for gravitational force, we are going to do an example uh, the example is going to ask you what is the force of gravity between two 100-kilogram people standing 0.5 meters apart from each other. So we take our equation. The force of gravity equals the gravitational constant multiplied by one mass, another mass, and then divided by the radius between them squared, or the distance between their center of masses. We're going to plug in all of our numbers. Uh, we plug in 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th uh, in for the gravitational constant and make sure we include the units this time for the purpose of seeing how they cancel out with other units. And then we're going to take a mass 1 of one person of 100 kilograms and mass 2 of another person that's another 100 kilograms and divide it by the distance between them that is squared. And that's the distance between their center of masses, so it's like a radius. What we should notice right off the bat is that the meters squared in the bottom... You're going to square the meters along with squaring the 0.5. We'll cancel the meter squared on the top that is part of the gravitational constant. And then the kilograms multiplied together will become squared and cancel out the kilograms squared on the gravitational constant as well. So then the only unit we're left with is Newton. So we should end up with some type of force, and it should be the gravitational force. So at that point, we have 2.7 times 10 to the negative 7th Newtons as our gravitational force. And if, force. And if you think about 2.7 times 10 to the negative 7th, that is a decimal, six zeros to the right of the decimal, and then 27 after that, that makes it the force between two people. It is a very, very, very small force, meaning that the gravitational attraction between objects is normally not felt. It's so small that it's negligible and we don't feel it. You have a gravitational pull between you and your desk at the moment and you just don't feel it. 
So the only way you can get a force that people can uh, feel uh, or, or be able to calculate be a large number is when things that are very, very massive, like the Earth, that is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, which is a very, very large number. So now what we're going to talk about is the gravitational field. And really what we're talking about in the gravitational field is the acceleration due to gravity. So on Earth, we have a gravitational field created by the mass of the Earth. And we use fields instead of force for two big reasons. We talk about the gravitational field or the gravitational pull of the Earth. And we talk about it as a gravitational field for two reasons. One, fields will tell us how the space is changed, and the second thing is the value, uh, the value of the field, at a, it'll give you the value of the field at a point as independent for the mass that's in that field. So you can put a free-falling object in the gravitational field so somebody can go skydiving, and you could talk about that mass in that gravitational field and how fast it would accelerate. So specifically for gravity, we're going to talk about the gravitational field, and it describes how a mass changes the space around it. This change in the gravitational field tells, us, tells other masses how to behave. is really what we're talking about. So the gravitational field describes how a mass changes the space around it. And so it, this change in the gravitational field tells masses how to act or how to behave in that field. And then we calculate the value of gravity, so the value of the field, or G, the gravitational pull, uh, or acceleration, how fast things are going to accelerate in that field, depends on the mass creating the field and how far away we are in there. So if we're skydiving uh, as an object in that gravitational field, the Earth creating the field and how far away we are will, will depend on, the gravity will depend on how far away we are and the mass of that Earth. Every object at a location experiences the same fields. So really what we're trying to say there is that the, we're going to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and it's the same for all objects at that point. So from our previous slide, we know that gravitational field, the field equals force over mass. And for us, the force is the gravitational constant times the very large mass, which is Earth, and then us as a person that is skydiving is the small mass, and some distance we are from our center of masses, which is R squared. And then we're going to divide that by our mass, the actual object that's in the field. Those cancel out, so they end up with the field equals GM over R squared, which then we're saying that the capital M is the mass of the object creating the field. And it's not the mass that is in the field. That's very important that we understand that. And so that lowercase g is telling us that we have an acceleration due to gravity caused by a gravitational constant, the mass causing the field, and the distance between that and the other object. So here's our example. How far from the center of the Earth is the gravitational field, if I need it to be eight, uh, sorry, if I need it to be eight Newton kilograms, how far from the center of the Earth is the gravitational field equal to eight Newtons over one kilogram? So we start with our equation. We have G equals M over R squared, we multiply both sides by R squared, and then we divide both sides by small g to get the radius or the distance by itself because we're looking for how far. So R squared will equal gm over lowercase g, or the, or the acceleration due to gravity. We plug in our numbers. And at that point, what we need to do is get a number, calculate across the top, divide by 8, and we'll get that to equal the, R, the radius squared. And then we can square root that. So you're going to plug all this stuff into your calculator. And the distance away from the Earth, where the gravitational field or the acceleration due to gravity is 8 newtons per kilogram, 
is 7.06 times 10 to the 6 meters from Earth. This means that we're approximately, that, that distance is about 690 kilometers above Earth, above the surface of the Earth. Now, the International Space Station is only 330 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So the International Space Station is being pulled, or has a, is in a gravitational field of, of the Earth and has 8 newton kilograms acting on it at all times, and it, it stays there. And so that's pretty nice, nice little chunk of information to know. We're 690 kilometers away is 8 newtons of kilograms. We're actually closer than that with our International Space Station, and it's able to stay in orbit. Um, we will get more practice with these things as we uh, do this in class. You will have a quiz and a test coming up over uniform circular motion and gravitational fields and orbits coming up. And uh, enjoy.